Now you're welcome back. So OTB Sports is back for another series of in-depth chats with some of the biggest names in Premier League history. We'll have behind the scenes access. We'll be talking to some of the legendary names from the biggest clubs and meeting some of the critical people behind the scenes as well. And it's all in association with Cadbury FC, official global partner of Liverpool Football Club. And you can check out CadburyFC.com for updates on promotions and giveaways. Now, we have just uh, done a brilliant interview with Robbie Fowler. I would urge you all to check it out. Talked about a whole range of things. Really honest, really thoughtful on uh, his career and hopefully his management career going forward. This is the part of the chat where we ask our guests to pick their dream five-a-side team and Robbie Fowler has done that for us. So, how much thought did you give this? How much time did you put into this five-a-side team? Um, probably about two minutes, Joe, in all fairness. <laughs> right, okay, we want <laughs> hey, it hey, no, but, it, but it was a good two minutes. It was okay. a good two minutes. So when, it's funny, actually, because when, you, when you're... I mean, again, you get asked like many questions about your favourite eleven, your favourite five aside, your favourite player you played with, played against. Uh, and now I, I'm I'm looking after my mates here, you know. And I I think my mates are great players as well. So I understand what they're all about. I know how they play. Mm. Uh, I know I've seen them in five aside, so I know how good they are. Uh, and I, I'd, I'd be confident of, um, of of us challenging for a for a major trophy with this team. Goalkeeper catches the eye. I think this is a really interesting choice. Tony Warner, who was at Liverpool for five years, 1994 to 1999, and never got to play Premier League game. 120 appearances on the bench. So why Tony Warner? Somebody like this probably underestimated by those of us outside the camp and probably important player in the camp. Well, I think you'll get a sense of where I'm going when you see the other players, Joe, but I think I'll, I'll tell you what. I am going for a scouse five-a-side, so... Okay. He never played for Liverpool, but I, I see him under the David James' tuition quite a lot, and you know he was a great player. And his, his, his nickname was Tony Bonus. We called him Tony Bonus, so it was Tony Warner. But he was he was Bonus. He had a brand new car, and you know his number plate was Bonus. Uh, now we called him Bonus because he was on the bench all the time, you know, collecting his bonus. Uh, and there was one particular game where we got to, uh, I think it was a League Cup final, uh, and I think we uh, we were getting a. a a, a bigger bonus, shall I say? I think maybe five or ten grand. Um, and Tony Bonus, he went out and spent all his um, he spent all his bonus, he spent all his money on a new car with the new number plate. And then maybe uh, about three or four days before the cup final, <laughs> Roy Evans went out and bought uh, another keeper on loan to put on the bench. <laughs> so he'd spent all his money, this bonus that he, he hadn't even got. On, um, on on this card and his number plate. So, but as a, as a lad, I love him to bits. He's, he's a great lad. He's a great keeper. He's a big keeper. And if he's in five side goals, there's not a lot of people going to score a goal past him. But he, he's obviously such a good keeper as well. Yeah, I'm sure you were very sympathetic when Roy Evans bought the other sub keeper and he didn't get his bonus. I'm sure the dressing room. No, he, he was in the dressing room. He, honestly, he was he was a talk of the dressing room for the full season. I think after that. <laughs> I mean, honestly, he'd, he'd spent the but he'd, I think he'd got more than enough in terms of bonus um, bonus uh, wages from you know all his um, appearances on the bench. Yeah. Well, Tony Warner, you are in. You're the goalkeeper in this uh, five-a-side team. So, defender. Well, defender again is um, someone who we've played with for years and talks quite a lot, uh, maybe too much at times or in a game, but. You knew he, he has that dedication, that desire to you know to to compete with the best, and, and it's Jamie Carragher, uh, great lad again, great lad. And um, you know if you want anyone to run through a brick wall for you, then it's uh, it's Carra. He's uh, you know he was a great player. He probably not as, I mean he, he probably wasn't the, you know, the unbelievable high echelons of the you know, the greatest players in the Premier League, but but what he had was an un, an incredible desire to be better than anyone else, and. Uh, I mean, you know, he's, he's was he eight hundred appearances or over eight hundred appearances for Liverpool. Um, I mean, that tells you the type of player he was. So, it, regardless of what people think of Cara, you know, he, oh, he's great or he's not so great. Eight hundred games for Liverpool. That tells you that he's one of the greats. And uh, yeah, he's he, he's going to be in my five side team because he's going to be talking a lot and he's be going to he's going to be throwing his bodies in front of everyone and and everything as well. Yeah. Incredibly determined. Like the image of the 05 Champions League final <clears throat> comes to mind. He did an interview recently with Gary Neville on the overlap and he was saying that, you know, numerous times Liverpool would buy other defenders and he might be in a bit of danger. And he said he knew 
day after day after day after day after tra day in training. Whoever was brought in couldn't work as hard as him, wouldn't want it as much as him, and in the end would just be like, I oh, saw this. And Carragher knew he was going to outwork whoever came in, which is an amazing yeah. quality. Well, I mean, it's brilliant. And it, I mean, it's such a good attitude to have, isn't it? It's, um, yeah. you know, every single day he went there. And, and I don't think he was interested about in terms of how how his training was. You know, OK, he had that incredible attitude, that I've said, but his attitude was... As long as I I have more desire and, and a better attitude than those players who come in, then you know I, I'll play, uh, and, and it worked. And you know he's absolutely you know phenomenal uh, Liverpool career because of it. Who's the better pundit, Carragher or Neville? The both of them are brilliant. To be fair, I, I mean I'll, I'll go for for, for Carragher because he's he's a Liverpool lad, and he's a yeah. scouser because this is where the team is. Uh, and obviously Gary, but to be fair, Gary Neville he, he's excellent as well. Uh, I mean, you, you follow him on social media times. He's probably got a little bit too much to say uh, in, in other things apart from football. But uh, I'll let it slide because he's such a good uh, he's such a good pundit with a uh, carrot. Yeah, no, it's a trick question. They're amazing. They're they're kind of unmissable TV. So we've Tony Warner, we've Carragher. Give us your two midfielders then. Who, are you, who, are you, who do you want to talk about first here? Oh God, I think the uh, arguably arguably one of the greatest ever Liverpool players um, you know obviously when you think of the great players you always mention uh, King Kenny uh, and this this fella gets a mention now um, well not now but, and, and as always has since he's been playing and it's uh, Steven Gerrard mm. uh, what a player you know could do anything you know anything asked to, I mean he could run the length of the pitch he had you know an unbelievable right foot as well that probably doesn't get the you know the accolades that it should do um, you know, he, he could you know, score free kicks. He had, you know, tap ins. He had every type of goal, uh, every type of important goal as well. You know, scored in in all the major finals. Um, so you know, not only did he score important goals and and score goals, but he was also an incredible player as well. Um, so you knew what you were getting with with, with Stephen. Uh, such a good lad as well. You know, at times he he, he he's very. Very straight lace when he does interviews now, and you know he was as a player. But in the dressing room, he was brilliant as well. Uh, yeah. So not only was he was he uh, you know a great lad on that pitch and and you know led by example, uh, but he was also a great lad in the dressing room as well. Um, you know that's what I loved about him as well. The, the fact is that he had he had a little bit of everything. Yeah, phenomenon, absolute phenomenon. He must have been a sight to behold even in training. So as you said, he could do everything. Like such a powerful runner, even. Like I'd say, over two hundred meters, you're just not beating him at most of yeah, the time. Well, no one. Yeah, well, I, I, th I think he was probably one of the quickest at the club as well. Uh, now he had these incredibly long legs that you know, someone looked as though he was going to be past him, and then all of a sudden these uh, the, these big legs came out and took the ball, and you know, all of a sudden we're attacking. Uh, but you, you knew what type of player he was. He came in as a, as a young kid and uh, like smashing the likes of Paul Ince and you know, you know, players like that in training session. You think, wow, you know, he's. Okay, he's got he's got respect for you know for for his elders and the senior players, but you know, that respect respect will go out of the window when he's trying to you know to uh, you know, to, to do what he's trying to do. Mm. Uh, but yeah, what a player! What a player! I, I, you know what what a lad! Love him to bits. He's uh, and you know, well, I'm not sure whether it's probably right saying this because I, I know there's a lot of Celtic fans over there, but it's great that he's doing well for Rangers as well because um, he's 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 on the makings of being one of the one of the great managers as well. Yeah. If he ever does get the Liverpool job in years to come, that would be some moment. Well, I think I've just spoke highly of him there, so that'll um, <laughs> you know, that'll help my cause as well. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so we have Tony Warner, we have Carragher, we have Gerrard. Your other midfielder, no surprises. Steve, yeah, Steve McManaman. Steve McManaman. Uh, I mean, I've mentioned before about the two greatest players you know in in Liverpool's history. You talk about King Kenny and uh, and obviously Stevie G. Uh, but this player was probably the best player. This player, this uh, Stevie Mack was probably the best player I ever played with. Um, right. You know, we had such a good rapport on the pitch. You know, really good mates. Um, unbelievably talented in, in running the length of the pitch uh, and in unbelievably control of the football. Um, I used to love watching him play. You know, I, I love players who get you on the edge of the, the seat. Uh, Stevie Mack was one of them players. Uh, went on to have. An unbelievable career as well. Um, you know, playing abroad, one of the, the the most successful Brits to have played abroad. Uh, but what I used to love about him, the fact is that when he scored, he was like dead blase, and you know, it just doesn't matter. But when I scored or anyone else scored, the delight in his face was unbelievable, uh, and I loved that about him. And that, that's 
that's Maka to a T. You know, he, he again, he's his, his team ethic and his his team remit, if you like, is uh, you know, it, it's it's not about me as an individual. You know, I, I want to do as all I can for the team, and, and Maka symbolises everything that you yeah. that you need to be in that in that moment. I won't lie. I spent a lot of the days in advance of talking to you, watching all your goals back on YouTube. There are definitely a lot of moments where he gets the ball on the half turn somewhere around midfield and starts running out of defence, and you come alive, like you know it's on, and you could, and he knew, yeah. and you knew, and you could almost you could see that telepathic relationship. It was and it was thrilling, I'm sure, for fans there. Well, r- relationships are massively important in uh, in football. They are, and I mean, I had such a good relationship with him. I mean, I, I mean, he's a little bit older than me, Macca. He played Liverpool schoolboys under 14s. I was under 11s, uh, but that was my first sort of. Um, my first period, if you like, to uh, you know, to, to meeting him and, and seeing him play. So I knew what what a good player he was from uh, from from like when I was eleven. Mm. Uh, okay, we we didn't we weren't massive mates. Don't get me wrong, we not massive mates until we played in the same Liverpool team. But uh, you know, I, I loved his career. You know, you know, I think he played at the time. It was um, I don't think anyone had ever done it. He played uh, for England under twenty ones before he actually made a first team appearance for Liverpool. Not many people had done that at that particular time, so um, you know you knew what a player he was and what a standout player he was, what a standout individual. And the fact is that he went to Real Madrid, one of the greatest clubs in the world, and never looked out of place. That's yeah. And you know what? I, I love him as a lad as well. So he's uh, that's my team. So you've got your Tony Warner, good scouser, Cara, Stephen, and well, the two Stephen, Stevie, Stevie G, and Steve McManaman. All, all great players. Yeah. Now, we've done this with various people across this series, and we've been very clear with them. You don't pick yourself. It's we want to get a sense of who you really rate. Yeah. So uh, you knew I this. Know. You knew this. <laughs> uh, well, you, you know what, Joe? Yes, I, I did. I, I did know that. But I'm, I'm thinking, uh, and you might put me in a place here, but I'm trying to think of, of good Scouse players who I've played with who, who can score goals. And don't get me wrong, I have played with them, but... They're not playing ahead of me. <laughs> not a chance. Not a chance. So I've, I've just told, told you the team that I want to win every honour, right? I want to win everything. And you got Stephen, uh, Steve, Stephen Gerrard. You got Cara, Jamie Carragher. You got Steve McManaman. Got the keeper who, who people will find it tough. And I'm a believer. If you've got that team and, and me as a striker in front of them, I'm going to score goals. And we're going to win games. And we're going to win trophies. So. There's no chance. I, I know what you're saying, and I take that on board. But when I when I was thinking of the team and uh, the, the Scouse team, uh, I wanted. I, I've got to be in it. I've got to be in it, Joe. <laughs> I'm not and arguing. I, you know, I, I I wanted to be in it because because I'll, I'll help I'll help us win something, right? <laughs> so reluctantly and and with humility, I'm picking myself. Says uh, Robbie Fowler. You're in. You're in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and you know what I do? I I play me all the time as well. No kidding, no kidding. Um, listen, we've taken up so much of your day. It's been so enjoyable, though. Really enjoyed it. And, and best of luck with the management career and beyond. Robbie Feller, thank you. Pleasure, mate. Thanks very much. Cheers. That was uh, the great Robbie Feller with us. All with thanks to Cadbury, official global partner of Liverpool Football Club. And you can check out cadburyfc.com for updates on promotions and giveaways. Robbie Feller there.